So Gus and I are out fossil hunting today. We are in New Jersey. I think this is an offshoot of Ramanusen Brook. And we are looking for Cretaceous and maybe a little bit of some Pleistocene fossils. So I've literally got myself stuck in quick mud, kind of like quicksand. Thing to do with this, though, is never to panic. So this is what we're looking at. A whole lot of gravel. Somewhere in the gravel, we may find fossils. The fossils that we're looking at today are in New Jersey. They're in Big Brook and Ramanusen Brook, which are located in Monmouth County, New Jersey. Now, as you can see, there are a lot of places in this area. The eastern side of New Jersey contains a lot of really nice fossil sites. These two that we're visiting happen to be in the Cretaceous. They're in the very late Cretaceous in something called the Navsink Formation. The Navsink Formation ranges from about 69 to 70 million years ago. So it's uh, just a little bit before that great uh, KT boundary event the extinction of the large dinosaurs that disappeared at the end of the Cretaceous. If we're lucky, we might find some of those things. We might find Mosasaur teeth or other things from the Cretaceous in this stream. I know I heard of somebody finding part of a pterodactyl not too long ago at Big Brook, one of these streams that we're visiting today. So we're going to start off with what's called Ravenusen Brook, also from the Navsing Formation. This one's known for having shark teeth, so hopefully we'll have some good luck with these. Later, Big Brook is known for large oyster and bolemnites, which are the remains of prehistoric squid. Down in these string beds, we're looking for shark's teeth, maybe fish bones, anything else that might have weathered out and washed into the river here. These items wash out over the winter and the spring might be a good time to find them. So we're gonna take a look. All right, guess it. what did you find? Well, I found a few shark teeth. Uh, this crow shark here was sitting between two pebbles. So I only saw it edge on, uh, but that's a nice, that's a nice, uh, one to find because those went extinct at the end of the Cretaceous, so you don't find them in the younger deposits. Um, Squalicorex. Uh, there's two species here, I think, Pristodontis and Cowpea. Here's a look at a close living relic. Um, that was a nice big one, but it's very water-worn. Um, this is a piece of fish bone. You can see the grain in it a little bit. Oh yeah? Yeah. And then, uh, you know, other assorted, uh, this is a fish tooth. This is not a shark tooth, but it's a tooth from another type of fish. Oh, Necronus, I think. So. Yeah, Encodus. Encodus, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Saber-toothed salmon, they call them. <laughs> yeah. These get really big. These get like two inches long, but that's a tiny one. Uh, and here's another crow shark. Nice little color. Oh yeah. And, that. and then I found this. That's Devonian. Oh, look at that. Yes, a very nice coral. Yeah. Wow. It's a Favocytes. So I think these, um, there was a period of mountain building and when those mountains eroded to make this gravel, there were fossils from the Devonian in those mountains. And you can occasionally find a, 
Devonian fossil in these deposits too that eroded down to create the the uh, gravel that the sharks swam over. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, and I did pretty much nothing. I found, <laughs> I went up and down. I did see a lot of boot prints, so it looks like somebody's been up there before us. Uh, I found this one, it looks like just a burrow that was in clay and might have expanded or something weird happened. So I got that, and I got two pieces of, I guess, delftware or porcelain. Huh. Somewhere there's someone who can identify that down to the manufacturer. Yes. So went up and down and didn't see too much. I was looking for larger shells and anything obvious right away. Didn't see that. So now what I'm going to do is start to scoop. And Gus is very good enough to tell me that he's found a couple of teeth right in this type of soil here. So I'm going to start to go through this. Teeth are very small, but the screen should be small enough to catch them and see if we find anything. Sharky's not in video. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my luck just turned around. Can you see it? Be able to see it now. Nice big shark tooth. So, in this case, uh, yeah, it looks like this stuff with the smaller gravel is might be worth sifting, and, uh, and then, then the stuff will start coming out. So, thank you, Gus, for giving me your spot over here. No problem. <laughs> so, yes. So, uh, so, yeah, so Gus showed me where to dig, and now we found, uh, found my first tooth. So, my luck is changing. So, there it is the one large shark tooth. And I also found, it looks like a piece of seashell, probably part of a Pycnodonte, which was a big oyster like thing. But this is just a fragment of it. Ah, so two, final, two fossils in the first scoop. This looks like it's going to be good. Okay, so Gus has found something on the ground here. It looks like a seed. I would have thought it was a seed. Yeah. That's a fish tooth. Oh, look at that. So, yeah, that, that, this was the chewing surface, and there would be a bunch of them arrayed in like a pavement-like uh, formation. And, and that would be a grinding surface. Very nice. I think I found a bone. Either bone or wood, probably bone. Or no, that's that. That looks like a piece of bone. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's a fragment of some bone. Something. Yes. Could be pretty much anything. It's a little fragment of bone. I choose to believe it's a dinosaur. <laughs> yes. It's a T Rex. <laughs> So Gus, who has a real knack for this, has just found another one. Let's see if I can even, oh yeah, there it is. Can you see it? This one actually looks like a shark's tooth because of the size and shape of it. You all pointed out. There you go. Nice, beautiful shark tooth. Good job. Thank you for sharing that, Gus. Thank you. Okay, and yet another one from Gus over here. Again, let's see if you can find it before he points it out. Give up. Oh, Gus, what you show them where it is. There we go. Nice shark tooth. You can see some of the bottom part. Oh, uh, it's missing one of the cusps. Missing a cusp, but oh, did the pieces break off? No, that's no. just the. Okay. All right. Another nice shark tooth.
Yeah, right. You get a little little Ecronus tooth here. Okay, so what is it you found over here, Gus? Uh, it's a, it's another crow shark, uh, Squalicorex, but this is the larger species. The other ones were the smaller oh, species. Yeah. Very nice. And you got a whole bunch in your jar? Uh, yeah, I have a few others. Not, not bad, not a huge day. Oh yeah, yeah, that's quite a few. Yeah. A couple of complete ones. I found some bone fragments. I found something that I'm um, not sure if it's a bone fragment or a twig. I didn't want to snap it in case it is a bone. It's that little black long skinny thing. Yeah. That is a twig. Yeah, okay. You can tell because you can squeeze the water out of it a little. Yes, okay. So. <laughs> so a couple of bone fragments, a piece of coral. I really like of... that. Yeah, I think you have the biggest tooth of the day. Okay, wait, I saw that. What was that? I'm not sure. It might have been a bone fragment. It doesn't matter. Oh, it's a ghost tooth. Oh, yeah, that was, I just found that a few minutes ago in, in soil up there. Yeah. Sifting soil. So that's just the enamel off the tooth. And... Some people think those are the uh, the immature teeth that haven't fully formed. Huh. Uh, and then other people have told me they're just teeth that have uh, had the uh, acid etch away the mineralized portions. Let me just look down there just in case. Other than that one shark's tooth, there's nothing here that, um, I, could, that I can't live without, so I don't have to worry about it. Okay. At this point, we kind of found all we expect we're going to find for a little while anyway over on this side so now we're going to take a look at the other side by going through this tunnel of somewhat nasty looking water Okay, that was weird. Now we are on the other side. Okay, so Gus thinks he has a tooth. Maybe a broken tooth. Do you see it? I see that. Are you sure it's not one of those plants? Oh, that. Ooh, there you go. Striatolamna. I think it's a striatolamna. Striatolamna. You can see these 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 uh, striations on the enamel. Those little uh, lines. Yeah. Yeah, it's just missing this one root. Nice. Oh, by the way, we are in this little spring that seems to be in the middle of nowhere but there are, do seem to be some nice shark teeth around it. Hopefully it's not somebody's cesspool. So now that we're in the cesspit area. We're finding shark's teeth. That oh, that's a nice tooth. Yeah. So now we're doing, as soon as we turn the camera off, Gus has found a shark vertebra. Very nice. The shark or mammal? I guess shark. Shark? Yeah. Awesome. I'm actually sinking. <laughs> My feet are stuck in. <laughs> Step, forward. The... Step forward. Step forward. We just get the camera off. <laughs> Right, so kind of show us this because we're passing this on our trip to the 
collecting fossil, Cretaceous fossils in the river, we're looking at Homedale Park. This is where those two radio repairmen were trying to find out why they could not get their <laughs> radio receivers static free. Kept trying to clean them inside and out, check the wiring, got rid of the bird do. They just could not figure out why their radio receiver was not kept having static. Well, they tried aiming it in other directions, got the same amount of static everywhere. And it turned out they had discovered the secret of the universe. They had discovered evidence of the Big Bang, the cosmic background radiation, which hits us everywhere on planet Earth. So here's the monument to those two radio repairmen who eventually ended up winning the Nobel Prize for discovering evidence of the cosmic background radiation. They came up with a problem, eventually figured it out, took a lot of data, published it, and eventually ended up being one of the secrets to our universe. Our second stop today is Big Brook. It's a little bit late in the day, but it's a beautiful place. And the fossils are a little bit more abundant here. So we'll know we'll definitely go home with something. If actually I can see some of the shells, bits and pieces of them in the water already. They're kind of sticking out. Probably a good place to dig and sift. We might be finding, well, <laughs> These are, that's just a tiny piece of one, but you can get Technodonte, which are ball boresters that get very big. If I remember correctly, this one's called Exogyra. So these are what we hope to be finding. The water is a bit deeper than usual, at least deeper than I remember it. So actually gonna be getting a bit wet again. I'm gonna have the camera away most of the time until we find some nice finds. Guys, it looks like you have a pirate hat on. It's out of my face. <laughs> All right, so this is someone screaming. So what you do is you get you a little water on, and you come back and look at it, and find the things they missed. Because a lot of people don't recognize all the fossils that are here. So. Here's one. This is part of a, I think this is part of a fish jaw. All right. See that, the, where it kind of branched? Yes. Um, sometimes you can find those with the other part and there's a tooth attached. And then um, here's a piece of a bell knight. Oh, look at that. Wow. Has that beautiful uh, translucent orange color. Yes, looks almost like amber. Yeah, yeah, they're really pretty. Uh, and this is just from kicking some of the stuff that somebody had screened and left dumped on the ground there. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's good for one pound. Yeah. All right, so Gus has found a spot where you can see a lot of this. Here's where the material comes from. This dark layer is from the Cretaceous. And so in this dark layer, as it weathers out, it's dumping Cretaceous fossils into the stream. And so here, if you take a close look, there's a blend night. And oh look, another Pictodonte or, or some or Exogyra, some type of uh oh, it's Exogyra. Exo a shell right over there, yes. And then there's another here. Yep. One came out over here. You can oh, see yes, the, you can see you can see where it was. Yes. And then there's more shell down here. Oh yeah. So this is, is the bank of actually one of many of these Cretaceous exposures along the banks of the river. Over here, this time in Big Brook, which is one of the most famous of New Jersey's fossil hunting. But we don't dig out the banks. Yes, okay, so in this here, you might think, hmm, well, why don't we just dig out what's in the bank? Well, if you look above us, look at all these trees, look at all these bushes, look at the houses above. People in the houses above would not be very happy if you start undermining their homes for fossils. 
So we don't dig into the banks. What we do is what nature takes out, we tend, we tend to find it. We come in the spring and there might be some new stuff just freshly out, but we're not digging into the banks. Thank you. Thank you very much for pointing that out, Gus. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, a lot of that glacial and above up there. Down here, Gus has just pointed out, we have some of these shells. These ones have weathered out naturally. They look like they're pretty close to full. Oh, there's a blemnite down there too, I think. It could be my eyes. Look right where my finger is pointing. Is that a blemnite? Or is it a stick? Is it ah! Oh, unfortunately, it's only. Oh, it's a piece of a blem knife. Oh, well. <laughs> but you can see it still has the marl on it, so it hasn't fully, you know, cleaned up. They, they come out fractured a lot of times. Yeah, it's hard to find a good one, a full one. I came here one year and they were like everywhere. Yes, it just might be a layer of them that just happened to erode at the right time. So ladies and gents, look at this. We've hit the mother load. Here we have a whole lot of fossils that have naturally weathered away out of this embankment, you can see lots of them. Wow, look at the size of these big ones up on top of the soil here. Lots and lots of them. Students who like fossils, look at all these. <laughs> awesome. What a beautiful place. Right now we're looking at another big embankment that is eroding away. Great place to look for fossils. Ah, look at these ones over here. It's like they're waiting to be found. Nice fossils eroding out of this bank. All right, so I've literally got myself stuck in quick mud, kind of like quicksand. Thing to do with this, though, is never to panic. Even though the stuff moves and sinks, it's kind of like 
flows kind of like water. The thing is to not move too much, not to panic. It will just pull you down more. I think I can get out of this, but I'm gonna try and do it without losing my shoes, my sneakers. I'm gonna put my hands on the wall over here. Look for some of the sediments that are less wet and then grab onto that tree as soon as I get, can get close enough to it and pull myself out. So never panic in quicksand or quick mud. You can get yourself out and I'm sure I will. If not, this will be the last video. <laughs> See you everybody soon. Okay, so now it's time for the wrap up. Let's see. Here is what Gus found. Let's get some sun in here. This is hard to see. This is a sea urchin spine. Wow. That is, yes, so look at that. Delicate, tiny, but definitely a sea urchin, sea urchin spine. Here's another one. Very nice. Whoops. Okay. Very nice. We have uh, um, an unusual oyster. Yes. Tended to say acanthostegum, but that's not right. No. It's Aglia something. We're forgetting the name on that one. We, we had it a while ago. Yeah. This is a tiny bellum night, but yes. it's complete. Complete and Fragma so cone to tip. So nice and translucent. Could you hold, hold yeah, yeah. Sun? Uh, so you can see the sunlight shining through this, how beautiful and translucent that is. That was inside a little squid. 80 million years ago. Part of the squid. This is a vertebra from a fish. Ah. It's hard to see uh, on camera probably. Oh wait, wait, no, we got a good view of it. You got it? Oh yeah. Close up, as long as it's in focus, close up on this is great. It's in focus. Awesome. These are, I'm not sure what this is. That looks like part of a mosasaur tooth. It, it almost does, uh, it almost looks like bone here. It could be a turtle spur also. Ah. Here's a little brachiopod. Fortunately, one corner is broken off, but. Oh, yes. I'll have to show you later on. I found one of those too. Yeah, I love these little brachiopods. You don't find many of those in the Cretaceous anymore. This is a uh, ghost uh, shrimp claw. Oh yes, yes it is. See, and you, it's missing a piece of the shell, so you can see it's it's very flimsy. There's not much to these fossils. They dissolve away very quickly. And then I have a few. Let me count them. It looks like four uh, crow shark teeth that we found. <laughs> That's just the internal mold of a shell. Wow, that's pretty cool. But I thought it was pretty, you know. Yeah. Um, this one, I'm not sure about it. Almost looks like uh, you can find ammonite segments here. Uh, the, oh. the The chambers, those uh -huh. complex chambers fill in with sediment and fossilize and then the shell dissolves away. And you're left with the, uh, you're left with these unusual shaped rocks. And, and I think that might be one, but I've never seen one so fenestrated. So I, I'm not sure what that is. <laughs> that goes home when we figure it out later. <laughs> yes, mystery <laughs> puzzle. Yeah. So, and then, uh, oh, I found a couple of uh, other bellum knights. Oh yeah. Nice collection of bellum knights. Bellum knights, bellum knights, whatever you want to call them. Yeah, I got to go through these and figure out which ones I'm leaving behind here and which ones. I'm going to pick the top ones and keep them. The rest can stay here in the parking lot for the next fossil hunter. <laughs> Sounds cool. Yeah, I think somebody's actually left some by the sign there for people, so that might be a good yeah. spot. Yeah, they did. So if you're watching this video, if you go to this spot before somebody else does, you might just find some nice bellum knights. And then there's this one articulated exodira. Oh, yes. See, articulated means you have both the top and the bottom. Yeah, both sides are there. That'll go home and a toothbrush will clean that up and it'll look nice and pretty. Yes. yes. Thank you. Thank you very much for showing us that. Oh, 
my pleasure. Thanks for coming with me. <laughs> Otherwise, I'd be doing this all alone. <laughs> yes. Same here. At the second site, we're limited. According to the rules, we can only take five from the Big Brook location, five per day. Uh, so I had to be very selective. Of course, I'm going to go with the biggest, nicest uh, exogyra that I found today. It's really large and it looks like it's articulated. It looks like after I get this mud out, this uh, glauconite and marl that it was preserved in, I think I'm going to find the bottom half well, actually, this is the top half. The big part is the bottom half. I think I'm going to find the top half of this exogyra, which is something very similar to oysters. That's the word I'm looking for. These are very curved versions of modern oysters. Over time, it was more beneficial for them to be flat, and that made it more difficult for predators to get at the meat or they look more undesirable. So these oysters eventually evolved from these very curved and round creatures, a lot like other bivalves and brachiopods to something that is much more like, uh, much flatter and much more difficult for their predators to eat. And here I have a, another exogyra, a little bit smaller. You can see the shell. The big half is the bottom part. The top half is actually much smaller, and these are overall much rounder than you would see in modern versions of the creature. This one I'm gonna keep because it's just so huge. This is only the upper part, the smaller part of a very large Pycnodonte, but I've never seen a beast this large. So this indicates there used to be an extremely large one living here. So uh, even though it's not a full one, this really tells, gives me some new information. So I'm gonna hold on to this. I'm also gonna keep that little blimnite I found in the jar and also the little brachiopods. So those are my five best. Uh, the rest are gonna leave for other collectors because that's the rules at this site. Here we have the wrap up from the first site which had a lot of shark teeth. First one, upper left side, is a fairly large goblin shark tooth. The one top center is that ghost tooth. Looks like either a small tooth that had come out or possibly one that had weathered a lot from the inside so the root is no longer there. And the third one on the top right is also a very weathered tooth. Very hard to diagnose what that one is because it's so weathered. The bottom row all look like goblin shark teeth to me as well. The first small one on the left is a weathered or damaged lateral tooth. The one in the middle, that was a really good one. That is a anterior tooth from the goblin shark that is in very good shape. And then there's a small lateral goblin shark tooth. All really good examples on the bottom row there. And some nice fossil teeth that were found in this creek. Definitely was worth the visit. So this has been a great little excursion to take a look at the fossil sharks and squids and bivalves and even brachiopods that could be found in the late Cretaceous, the upper late Cretaceous, right before that big event that put the end to the Cretaceous in the New Jersey area. Really great trip and a very nice park, that Big Brook Park, public area where people can go collect fossils as long as you follow their simple rules. My paleo friends, I hope you have enjoyed this video. I certainly enjoyed making it. Please give me a like. Please subscribe. Thank you so much. Have a great day.